In this section, we get into symmetric matrices and a process that we call orthogonal diagonalization, which just sounds pretty cool. The whole basis of this is that if a matrix is symmetric, there are certain properties that follow from it that allow us to diagonalize the matrix knowing those properties. So first of all, reminder, a matrix is symmetric if it's equal to its own transpose. So if the matrix is equal to its own transpose, then we have a symmetric matrix. So if you have an n by n symmetric matrix, which I mean, it has to be a square matrix in order to be able to be equal to its transpose, then three things are true. The first thing is you can diagonalize the matrix. Remember, we came up with some examples in the past where we didn't have enough eigenvectors and so we weren't able to diagonalize the matrix. If you have a symmetric matrix, you can diagonalize the matrix. The second part of it is that you'll get only real eigenvalues of A. So you won't get one of those, you know, lambda squared equals negative three and you have non-real eigenvalues. The third thing is that if you have an eigenvalue with a multiplicity of K, so let's say you end up with a lambda minus four quantity squared. So you've got a multiplicity of two, then you'll get two linearly independent eigenvectors, which then goes back to the first step, the matrix is diagonalizable. So you won't end up with a case where you have a squared term or a cubed term that only produces one eigenvector. If you have a squared term, it'll produce two eigenvectors. If you have a cubed term, it'll produce three eigenvectors. So that means you'll be able to diagonalize the matrix. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. I'm going to start with a three by three matrix over here. This matrix A will be the matrix 1, negative 4, 2, negative 4, 1, negative 2, and 2, negative 2, negative 2. Now, first of all, notice that, assuming I copied this down correctly, that this matrix is symmetric, right? So the matrix is equal to its own transpose, which means if I go to diagonalize this matrix, all three of those things that I wrote above will be hold true. All the eigenvalues will be real. I'll be able to diagonalize the matrix. And if I happen to come up with a lambda that has a multiplicity of more than one, it'll have more than one eigenvector come from that eigenvalue. So let's try it. Let's try to diagonalize this matrix. All right, just a reminder of the process. We start with our lambda i minus a, which does what? It subtracts the numbers from lambda down the diagonal. And so I'll end up with a lambda minus 1. I'll get another lambda minus 1 over here. And I'll get a lambda plus 2, right? Lambda minus a negative 2 is lambda plus 2. And then the others just change their signs because you're subtracting them. So that becomes a positive 4, negative 2, positive 4, positive 2, negative 2, positive 2. Right, now let's find the determinant. So I'll take lambda minus 1 times. What's on the inside when I knock out row one and column one is lambda minus one, lambda plus two, and then minus four. Minus four times what? Four times lambda plus two minus a negative four, and then minus two times eight minus a negative two gives me plus two lambda minus one. Right, and my goal is to take that characteristic polynomial and set it equal to zero. Let's try to simplify these things on the inside with the hopes that something factors and I can pull out a common factor. Otherwise, if I have to multiply this whole thing out, I'm going to end up with a cubic polynomial and I'm going to have to do synthetic division, which is not the most terrible thing in the world, but maybe I can avoid it. Let's try it. So carry my lambda minus one. On the inside now, I get lambda squared plus lambda minus 2 minus 4 more gives me minus 6, which means that this inside thing factors now, lambda minus 1, lambda plus 3, lambda minus 2. Yeah. Then over here, I get a minus 4 times... 4 lambda plus 12, right? 8 plus 4 more gives me 12. So I can actually pull a 4 out of here. So if I do 4 times 4, that'll give me 16 times lambda plus 3. Over here, I'll get 8 
plus two lambda minus two, which is two lambda plus six. So I can pull out a two and I get minus four times lambda plus three. Ah, look at that. All three terms have a lambda plus three. So let's pull that lambda plus three on the outside. And then what's left on the inside is the lambda minus one, lambda minus two. So that gives me lambda squared minus three lambda plus two. Over here, minus 16. Over there, minus four. All right. And this should be a whole lot less painful than having to do synthetic division. Not that synthetic division is terrible. Actually, I actually haven't done it in a while. But if we can avoid it, we will. All right, how about my lambda? So minus 3 lambda, and then the rest are just constants. So negative 18. And then that thing factors as lambda minus 6 lambda plus 3. And so when I slide this up, I end up with two lambda plus 3s, right? There's a lambda plus 3 out here and another one over there. So I end up with lambda plus 3 squared times lambda minus 6 equals 0. So my two eigenvalues are lambda equals negative 3 with a multiplicity of 2 and lambda equals 6. Now, in previous examples, I had said that I always tried the multiplicity of 2, 1 first because if it doesn't produce two independent eigenvectors, then problem's done. It can't be diagonalized. In this case, it doesn't matter because I know it's a symmetric matrix, therefore it can be diagonalized. And so, I don't know, I might pick it first just because it's there, but I don't have to do it first because I know that because it's symmetric, it'll produce two linearly independent eigenvectors. So let's do our lambda i minus a and set it equal to zero. Okay, so I'll do negative three i minus a, which means I have the identity matrix multiplied by three or negative three. And then I'm going to subtract the original matrix A, which is 1, negative 4, 2, negative 4, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 2, negative 2. All right. So what happens when I subtract those? Three, a negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. 0 minus a negative 4 is positive 4. 0 minus 2 negative 2. Then I'll end up with a 4, negative 4, 2, and then negative 2, 2, negative 1. Well, this is good because you notice that the first and second row are opposites of each other. And if I take the top row and divide it by 2, I'll get the bottom row, which means when I go to row reduce this, I'm going to end up with just the top row and two rows of zero. So I'm going to divide by negative four and I get one, negative one, one half, and then two rows of zeros. All right. I'm going to drop in my column of zeros so that I can set it equal to zero, like that. And this will require two parameters. So let's call x sub 3 t, and then let's call x sub 2 s. Now that means that top row across is going to be x sub 1 minus s plus one half t is equal to zero, which means that x sub one is s minus one half t. All right, so let's set up our two eigenvectors, one of them with the s's and the other with the t's. So for x sub one, I have an s and I have a negative half a t. For x sub two, I have an s and no t's, and for x sub 3, I have no s's and 1t. All right, then we can repeat the same process with the lambda equals 6. So hang on to those two eigenvectors. We'll come back to that. For lambda equals 6, I've got 6, 0, 0, 0, 6, 0, 0, 0, 6. So there's my lambda i minus the matrix A that's up top here. 1, negative 4, 2, negative 4, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 2, negative 2. 
All right, so 6 minus 1 is 5. I got a 4, negative 2. In the second row, I got 4, 5, 2, and then negative 2, 2, 8. All right, I'm going to add my column of zeros. I'm going to throw this through a, a row reduction function on a calculator, and I'll just share with you what I got for the answer. I got 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, and I've got my column of zeros. All right, so this one should only yield 1. So x sub 3 is my t. The second row says x sub 2 is going to be negative 2t, right? I'll take that negative 2. I'll take that 2 and throw it over on the other side. And x sub 1 is going to be equal to 2t, right? So when I move it over to the other side. So this eigenvector is 2, negative 2, 1 times t. All right, so I've got three eigenvectors. Those three eigenvectors get thrown into a matrix. That's my matrix P. So matrix P will be, let's take the two columns from the top. I got 1, 1, 0. And the other one, if I want to avoid having to deal with those fractions, just multiply it by 2. So I get negative 1, 0, 2. And the last one will be 2, negative 2, 1. Now, if I had a lot of time or if I wanted to use a calculator to do this, I could take P inverse times A times P. And I know what the answer is going to be. The answer is going to be a diagonal matrix with those lambdas down the diagonal. So the first two here, right, these first two columns were for lambda equals negative 3. So I know that I'm going to get a negative 3, 0, 0, 0, negative 3, 0. And the last one was for the lambda equals 6. So that's what I'm going to get. All right, so on a test, you don't have to sit there and figure out P inverse A times P for a 3 by 3. For a 2 by 2, you can do it pretty easily. But for a 3 by 3, I'll save you the time of having to multiply all that out. But you should be able to match up those columns with the answers in the diagonal matrix. So if you put your 2, negative 2, 1 column first, then yours would go 6, negative 3, negative 3. The idea behind doing it all this way is that I can set up an, in a matrix that's diagonalizable because I started with a symmetric matrix. All right, let's take a look then at what an orthogonal matrix is. And we'll run through the process of orthogonal diagonalization. A matrix is orthogonal. when the inverse is equal to the transpose. And if that's the case, then its column vectors form an orthonormal set. What do we mean by an orthonormal set? Meaning that the vectors are all orthogonal to each other. So if I take the dot product of any two of uh, those column vectors, I'll get zero and they have a magnitude of one. So the dot product is zero and the magnitude of each one is one. So take a look at this matrix here. Let's say matrix A is the matrix negative four fifths, zero, three fifths, zero, one, zero, three fifths, zero, Four fifths. Okay. The first thing is, I don't know, let's call these column vectors u, v, and w. Take the dot product of u and v. If I do that, I'll get 0 plus 0 plus 0. That's 0. Take the dot product of v and w. Again, I'll get three zeros added together that gives me 0. And now take the first and the last. Take the dot product of u and w, and I'll get negative 12 over 25 plus 0, and positive 12 over 25, that gives me 0 also. So these things are orthogonal. Now, are they normal? Well, take the magnitude of u, and I'm going to get what? 16 and 9 gives me 25. So yeah, 25 over 25, that's 1. Obviously, the second one 
is one. And the same thing's going to hold true for the third one. The magnitude of the third vector, I guess in this book we put doubles around them, equals one also. So all of those are normal. So if it's orthogonal and normal, then it's orthonormal. And therefore, we say this matrix A is an orthogonal matrix. Now, if you have an orthogonal matrix, then the eigenvectors, it turns out, are going to be orthogonal also. So let's try this with a two by two, just to illustrate my point. Let's start with this matrix here. That is negative one, negative two, negative two, two. Right. Looks to me like a symmetric matrix. If I do lambda i minus a's to find the characteristic polynomial, I'll get lambda plus 1, 2, 2, lambda minus 2. Take that determinant, set it equal to 0. I'll get lambda squared minus lambda minus 2 minus 4. And so lambda squared minus lambda minus 6. Right. That factors as lambda minus 3, lambda plus 2. So my eigenvalues are lambda equals 3, lambda equals negative 2. All right, now let's try to find the eigenvectors. So let's do 3i minus a. So I get 3, 0, 0, 3 minus negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, 2. Ooh, watch your signs on this one. 3 minus a negative 1 is 4. That's 2. That's 2, 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay, good. They're multiples of each other. So I end up with 2, 1. Let's throw in that 0 in the third column. All right, so if x sub 3 is equal to t, I'm sorry, x sub 2 is equal to t, then x sub 1, well, 2x sub 1 would be negative t, so x sub 1, negative 1 half t. So my first eigenvector becomes negative 1 half, one. All right, how about the second one? The second one then would be negative 2i minus a. So I get negative 2, 0, 0, negative 2 minus negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, 2. All right, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. 0 minus a negative 2 is 2. Down the bottom, I get a 2. Negative 2 minus 2, negative 4. All right, good. Again, multiples of each other. So I'll get 1, negative 2, 0, and that will all be zeros. Okay. x sub 2 is t, x sub 1 is 2t. So I get 2, 1 as my other eigenvector. All right, maybe it's nicer to take this first one up here and clear out the fraction so that I get negative 1, 2. So we can set up our matrix P. Our matrix P is made from those eigenvectors. So the first one will be negative 1, 2. The second one will be 2, 1. So what did we do? We started out with a matrix that was a symmetric matrix. Because we had a symmetric matrix, if we take those two eigenvectors, negative 1, 2, and 2, 1, and take the dot product, we'll end up with negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. And it's not an accident that it happens that way. If you have a symmetric matrix, it turns out that those um, vectors that we come up with, those eigenvectors, are going to be orthogonal to each other. All right, we'll do the orthogonal diagonalization in a separate video.